Well, the album comes out and it goes platinum. Mm. And now the Dungeon family is in the game. Mm. They're the ones responsible for putting together this musical masterpiece. And right. one of the groups is is Outcast. Right. And I guess Goody Mob wasn't really a group at that point, but you had said that the first Outcast album did so well, the LaFace kind of just took a bunch of the guys that were featured on that group and put them together as Goody Mob. Well, that was actually it was um you're right. You're right about that. Because once I guess once LaFace heard the um the Get Up, Get Out and Get Something uh, song and the Call of the Wild song, I'm pretty sure that organized noise went in there and convinced them that look, this record done went platinum. Because at that time, I didn't know what the hell Platinum was. I really didn't give a damn what the hell Platinum was, really. But I guess LaFace was like, okay, a million records? Okay, well, um, they're already out, and this album is Platinum. It only makes sense, a business sense, to go ahead and put out a Goody Mob record and just put Gip and CeeLo in the group with Timo and Cujo because Timo and I was the one that brought Goody Mob to the dungeon at the end of the day, because we was like, well, hell, let's just get on, man, because hell, like, we know Gip, shit, I, we know CeeLo, and shit, y'all boys can goddamn rap, we can rap, man, let's let's do it. We already showed the world that we can do it with these two songs, and man, let's go ahead and put this this masterpiece out, Soul Food, man, and just keep it moving. It wasn't, it wasn't no reserves, none. So then you guys start working on your debut album, Soul Food. Right. And I remember when Cell Therapy came out, hmm. it was like, yo, this this beat is crazy. Mm, me too. I thought the same thing, man. Like, that was not one of those beats that had to grow on me. That was like from the first listen, I said, ah. Wow. This is, this is a hit right here. And you actually started off the song. Yep, actually started off the song, man. Um actually had my verse ready. So at, at that time, it's all about who got their verse ready. You know what I'm saying? You got you got some, Joe? I got some, man. Well, shit, let's, let's hear what it sound like. And when the piano came on, I was like, man, what the hell is this, man? What is this? I wanted to keep rapping how the piano was going, but I just kind of got caught up into the rhythm and, and flowing. It just went all the way down because that's not how I wanted to do the rap. But since it was already already down, and you ask organized noise, they know me. If I get in, I'm like, uh, let me do it another way. Let me do it another way. So I'll be done changed four or five different times to where they have to keep my original verse and say, look, Joe, this is how you did that. But hearing that song for the first time, man, I was like, man, nobody finna be dancing to this song, man. I, I don't know, I don't know how we're gonna do it with this song, man, but just to let the people up top know that, you know what I'm saying? Southern people, man, we, we can read and we, we we know about what's going on and we can get with it and we can put it in, in, in song form and make it interesting, man. That was the that was the icing on the cake right there, man. And and plus LA Reed let us get away with that. I mean, come on, man. We on a an on an R and B record label, right? And that's what organized noise I always I always be reminding me, Cujo, y'all was on a y'all was on an R and B record label. Y'all was just straight raw. I mean, we couldn't put no makeup on y'all. We couldn't put no pot on y'all. Y'all was just raw, man. And it was just just for them to just to, just for LA Reed just to be like, man, run with it. I trust organized noise. Run with it. And to this day, man, it's man, it's it's a pillar in hip hop, man, to this day. Well, CeeLo does the second verse right. on that song. And I'm going to tell you, that's my favorite CeeLo verse ever. Got to be, man. Man. Ever. You know, me and my family moved Ooh, to this apartment, apartment complex. complex. Like, wow. Like, wow. the imagery and the way he was, he was harmonizing that shit. Mm. And then, you know, the way he kind of ended, you know, I wonder if the gate was put up to keep crime out and keep our ass, ass in. Like. He absolutely killed that song. Man, when I heard his verse on Get Up, Get Out and Get Something, I knew it was going to be special with him. See, I met him rapping in my partner backyard. His name is Glenn Cook. He stayed out Peyton, Peyton Road. 
it was a big old cipher, right? And I see him get inside the cipher and just started going off, man. I mean, and I got in there with him, just started going off with him. But for him to put that shit down or get up, get out and get something as far as like writing that shit. I mean, back then, Shadow was like writing. I'm talking about pads filled up with stuff. I mean, just writing, man. So back in them days, man, we had notebooks full of poetry, man. Full of poetry, ready, man. So I knew it was something about him when, when we did that, when he did that get up, get out and get some verse and came in with the cell therapy verse. Special. What was that song really about? It was really just kind of about paranoia as a whole. The cell therapy song? Well, actually, man, the cell therapy hook was a, a lumberjack vibe that Timo and I used to have way before we did a, um, a Goody Mob song. So that was just a hook that was in reserve. But before we, before I came to lay that verse, I was at a friend's house and um, she had some tape on. It was about some conspiracy shit that was going on. And I just happened to, you know, my thing was to bring my pad with me, you know, so I might catch a vibe or whatever. And I just happened to catch that vibe right there. And I just happened to just write it down without music or whatever. Then we finally get to the studio and I hear the track playing and I'm like, oh, oh, this will go good with it. The verse. So after I lay the verse, I'm thinking about the hook, the lumberjack hook that's been sitting in oak, aged in oak, like 30 some, <laughs> three, five, seven years. And I just put the two together and it just and it just made it just made that song because. Who's that peeping in my window? Pile, nobody now. I mean, how do you play that in a, in a club atmosphere? And for that to be our, our first single, man, it was just, I don't know, man. It was just something special about that song. It just had to come out at that time because after that, it was like, a okay, a they don't dance no more type of, oh, okay, okay, okay. But no, you guys chose to come out with a groundbreaking song like Cell Therapy that, oh, that we can come and ask all four of y'all like, what? Why did you write this? I mean, what inspired you guys? I mean, come on, we from Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, the, the light wasn't really shining down there, really, on, on the hip hop scene. You know what I mean? You had, of course, you had Curtis Mayfield down there doing his thing. And we know about Jane Brown coming out of Augusta, Georgia. And we know about all the greats, but not this type of um, not this type of music and saying this type of shit on this type of music and coming off of R and B record label. Something special about these guys. Well, the song comes out and it hits number one on the rap singles chart. Then Soul Food comes out mm. and that hits number seven on the singles chart. And then Dirty South comes out, that hits number eight. Whoa. And uh, that was really the first time you heard the term Dirty South, period. Something, a term that's still used to this day in 2020. And this was what, 95? Yeah, 95. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 25 years later, they're still using that term. Still using that term. But you know what? The thing about Dungeon Family, and the thing about a lot of artists coming out of Atlanta, Georgia, man, they're creative, man. They're creative. And not taking in, not taking them away from any of the other regions, but I'm just saying Atlanta because they hadn't been discovered at that time about what the hell can they do. But just groundbreaking and trend-setting type of things and then you got a brother coming out with corning corning a um some an image that you can put with atlanta georgia so you can't just say the south now you know what i'm saying like you were saying texas and florida you got to say the dirty south now and that's that's coincide with atlanta georgia right there in atlanta georgia east point all outside of atlanta georgia college park decatur all of that man so Cool Breeze really, really did the damn thing when he coined that term, man, Dirty South, man. I got it. I got double hand salute him for that. Right. And and on the song, Timo said, uh, you're talking about his best friend, Bean. Best friend, Bean. Uh, losing him. So what happened to Bean? That's hard, man, because Bean had a heart attack. He had a heart attack. And just recently, I was shooting my video a week ago, and I just recently found out that he was found in a park around here in, in, in an area that we used to um, frequent all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I did not even know that, man. But 
Yeah, Bean had a heart attack, man. And uh, matter of fact, he was um he went to Mays High School. He came out a year before us, and um we were real good friends, man. He was definitely a part of um the Goody Mob Lumberjack phase. Goody Mob Lumberjack phase. He was definitely intricate in that, and intricate in um and um being being that when the word trap was um was recognized at the time. So yeah, Bean was he was there. He was there.